you hear an interview with Dr Bob Dean, who's talking about a trial he conducted to assess different ways of treating the condition known as tennis elbow. You now have 90 seconds to read questions 31 to 36. The condition, commonly called tennis elbow, is a painful condition of the tendons which interferes with tasks involving gripping and manipulating objects. A recent trial led by Dr. Bob Dean has tried to see what type of therapy works best. Bob, is there a typical way that tennis elbow starts? It's a very common condition, but apart from tennis players themselves and people working in industries where they do certain manual tasks, it's surprisingly difficult for patients to pin down the actual start of the pain. And even with those high-risk activities, it's generally something that comes on over a period of time. In tennis, it used to be said it was down to the player's grip or the type of racket they were using, but nobody's really researched that thoroughly. There are plenty of guidelines out there, but they're not evidence-based. When somebody has pain, then modifying their tools, whether that's a tennis racket or something at work, may well help. But that doesn't necessarily mean there's a causal link. So what was your approach in the trial you conducted? Well, we divided our patients into three groups. One group followed a physiotherapy programme. Another was asked to do nothing to see if the condition just went away by itself. The wait-and-see group, we called them and people in the third group were given steroid injections. The physiotherapy we used was a specific elbow manipulation. The therapist applies manual force to the elbow joint, and at the same time, the patient actually performs the kind of task that causes the pain. The aim is to apply the force in a way that relieves that particular pain. But just as important is the physical activity the therapy calls for, because in most tennis elbow patients, their muscle system's quite debilitated. And I understand that complete rest wasn't seen as an option? Instead, you describe something called smart rest? Resting's an interesting thing. Immobilizing the arm in a sling is probably the worst thing anyone with tennis elbow can do. In fact, resting most muscular skeletal pain isn't good. What we advocate is something called smart rest, and what this means is being as lively, as dynamic as possible, but not hurting the elbow. An example is where patients avoid picking things up with their palm facing down, which is classic advice given to anyone with a condition. But patients do need the stimulus of movement to help rehabilitation. And so all our participants were given advice on how to manage their condition ergonomically, even the wait-and-see group. The difference was they didn't get any other form of treatment, whereas our other two groups did. So what were the results? What we found was that steroid injections were more effective in the first six weeks, but not after that. The physiotherapy group also reported good results at six weeks, comparable to those for the injection group, and much better than those reported by the wait-and-see group. But then, after three months, the situation had changed. 
The physiotherapy group was now reporting better results than the injection group, and, remarkably, so was the wait-and-see group. Indeed, they were catching up all round, so much so that, after six months, physiotherapy is no more effective than doing nothing. At 12 months, and what's fascinating is that with a second study to show this, the recovery rate for people who do nothing was 70 to 80 percent. So what does all this mean for patients? What advice would you give them on the strength of this trial? I'd say, in the first instance, rest the elbow and see how it is in three months. If it hasn't resolved itself by then, they're probably one of those 20 to 30 percent who aren't going to get better. At that stage, I'd recommend they have some sensible physiotherapy. I don't think there's much evidence to support the use of steroid injections until a really good attempt's been made with the wait-and-see approach backed up by physiotherapy. But it's still worth trying at that stage because the alternative could be some quite drastic measures, even possibly surgery. I see. Now, it's quite common for people to think that if something's sore and swollen, they've got to take anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen. Are they right? Well, there have been various studies about this, and what they've found is that there's little evidence of inflammation in tennis elbow. So there's no reason to think that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are going to be very beneficial. So I suspect that just taking basic over-the-counter pain relief would be at least as successful as taking anti-inflammatory drugs in the case of tennis elbow.